So welcome everyone to the second session of the ASPE Speaker Series. My name is Russell Mason, Vice President of ASPE and your MC for tonight. So before we start, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so to reduce background noise during the presentation, please keep your line on mute. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat function on your Zoom screen. And our moderator for tonight, Sue, will pose your questions to John at the end of his presentation. Um, and I think Adrian will be asking some questions along the way as well. So share between those two. Uh, tonight's presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our newly, newly created ASPE YouTube channel. So you can jump onto YouTube and search for Team ASPE if you want to have a look at last week's uh, interview. <laughs> okay, for tonight's presentation, we have a look at what's happening over in Adelaide Street scene. It's a shot in the heart of Adelaide presented by ASPE member, John Staines. Just a little bit about John. He, uh, he started shooting a few years back with his mobile phone when he was frequent, frequenting, uh, frequenting the coffee shops in Adelaide in the mornings with his dog. And initially shooting buildings and architecture, he was frustrated by the way that people were entering his shots until he discovered the world of street photography online. He's inspired by, by YouTube presenter and photographer, Sean Tucker. He, uh, he took the plunge and purchased his first uh, real camera and turned his focus to the street. John's a self-taught photographer who entered Sitom in 2019, where he sold his first image at the gallery. He was also nominated for a South Australian Living Artist finalist for Best Latent Image in 2009. So... 19. 19, sorry. I'm yeah. not <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So on behalf of the ASPE committee, I would like to welcome all members and guests to this presentation. So over to you, John. Okay, thanks very much for joining me. I can't believe... So many people have got nothing to do on a Tuesday night. Thank you. <laughs> um, what would you like me to say? I don't oh, yeah. know. So we're going to go through some of my images. Uh, I didn't realise it was going to be in this format. So, uh, so uh, we're exactly. more going to have a chat between John and I, and I'll share some images, and we'll sort of talk about them. So, but how about we just start going? Talk about that journey, John, from when you sort of were just drinking coffees and photographing your your coffees and putting them on Instagram, and yeah. What made you go down those uh, the next step and the next step to where you got to now? Okay, so uh, I never had a, it started with my smartphone. I never had a smartphone. I had to get one for work because I hated them. I knew I'd be addicted to it. But then I realized with the smartphone, and I am, um, I had a camera. So I start, I'm a big coffee drinker. So I just started taking photos of all the coffee shops that I go to because I frequent a lot. And I was just doing reviews and then I learned how to, take photos and learn how to touch them up on. I didn't realize, I was only doing it on Instagram. You know, I had my account closed, it's just for friends. Uh, and that's how I started. And then pretty much, um, I got a bit disillusioned with the whole world. I used to follow politics quite heavily and I used to be involved in politics a little bit. And uh, I got quite disillusioned with everything, especially when Trump got folded in, I just thought the world had gone shit. So um, I decided that I wasn't gonna read the paper anymore. And uh, I just thought I'd walk around and start taking photos of buildings and stuff. Um, and it was on my way to work, so I didn't have much time. And I'd get quite frustrated uh, when people would walk into my shop because I just wanted a picture of the bloody building, you know what I mean? So uh, in the end, I just thought, this is, I can't, I can't waste tons of time doing this. I'll just start waiting for a single person to come into the shop or something, and then I'll, I'll take that. So anyway... That's how I started. And then I came across Sean Tucker. And uh, while trying to learn how to, I didn't realize you could touch up your photos using Snapseed and things like that, because I was a complete noob. So I, I could never understand why uh, my images look crap and everybody else's look great. So, um, and then I started following Sean a bit and then I realized what I was doing was potentially street photography. And that's, that's where I stepped in and then I started getting more and more involved with that. I bought my first camera, Nikon 3400D, and uh, I just twiddled the knobs until I got a decent picture, and then that was about it. And then I've met a few other people, like Adrian. I started uh, looking what other people were doing online, and then um, I just slowly started to get a little bit better. And that's how my journey started. So then I started... So it was just a hobby, I'm just an amateur, just a hobby, it's just for fun, just keeps me recreated. And um, and then I've fallen into exhibiting and selling images. So 
that's not something I ever planned to do, and I'm quite surprised that it's uh, it's happened. To be honest, in such a short time, because what it's about 2017 you started shooting, so three years to from then to yeah, a whole year on my phone, and then about two years with a camera. So I started off on the the Nikon 3400, like I said, just uh, with the the cheap zoom lens kit lens that came with it, and then I uh, I. Like I was saying, I was learning on YouTube, so you know all the street photographers say the best thing to do is to shoot with a prime. So I got a prime, and then that's when my photography started to improve because you have to work more on setting everything up properly instead of zooming in and out. So and so, what's your progression about, from where you were shooting now then to now? What what have you um, where, where, where do you see your progress as a street photographer? What you look for out on the streets? What you're trying to shoot and capture? Um, well, when you first start, you don't realize that you don't see anything. <laughs> and uh, the, more, the more you look at other people's work, the more that you learn. And um, I found that I was, I was looking at, VR, uh, through the, at the world through blinkers. And uh, so now looking at how other people shoot and how to see the world, I've learned to see other things like reflection. I'd look up. Tons of different stuff. I've particularly been attracted to light and shadow. That's my thing. I always look for light. So I, I have a saying, if you find good light, you'll most 99 times out of 100, you'll find a good shot. So, but I'm attracted to anything and everything I like. Everything's candid, nothing's set up. It just happens as it happens. Um, that's when I realized how many coincidences happen in the, in the world when you actually start to pay attention. So um, it's it, street photography is, it's allowed me to reconnect with my community and uh, society in general. Um, so, a question that could be quite interesting, I think, for you know, a lot of us Melbourne is, how do you find shooting in Adelaide in comparison to when you've shot in Melbourne? Okay, so everybody says uh, Adelaide's really small, and, uh, and it is, but it's got fantastic light. So um, for me, I can... I guess when you get used to a place, you get to know where you want to go and stuff. But for me, Adelaide... I've lived here. I'm originally from the northeast of England, uh, South, South Shields, near Newcastle. Uh, I came here 33 years ago, and in that time, I've seen more of Adelaide in the last two years than I have in the last 33 or 31, because I just, I walk everywhere. I walk every street. I walk down every alley, dead end, whatever, corner, different times of the day, different times of the night, whatever. And I just, that's what I do. So it, Adelaide's hard because it is small and you've got you've got quite a limitation one of people. Sometimes that can be difficult because there's not there's not as many people. But at the same time, that's also good for isolation, getting people isolated in the shot. And um, it help. In Adelaide, you have to be far more creative because of your limitations of what you have to shoot. So that's really helped me a lot as well. So when I go to somewhere like Melbourne or Sydney, I'm inundated with possible possibilities it's i find it quite easy because it you have to learn how to shoot the same street in adelaide 99 different ways or different times of the day or whatever so um yeah it's really helped me a lot in that regard but uh, melbourne's melbourne's a breeze to shoot and the only thing that's bad in melbourne's the light sometimes you know but then you just shoot black and white awesome so what we'll do mate is have a nice share my screen and we'll start putting some of your shots up and sure. just, let's just talk about them Sure. Sorry. Is that right. my work? Yes, it has, mate. Yep. So just talk us through this one, John. We are winning. Oh. Well, yeah. Okay, this was one of my this is one of my first shots I ever started to take with my camera with my prime. So it was uh, it's in summer in Adelaide. I just I was just bagging Adelaide uh, Melbourne weather there but this is summer in Adelaide so what I do is I, uh, I eat my lunch at my desk and then I use every opportunity to shoot so I have a camera with me morning afternoon and night uh, I decided that I was on if you if you look all the way down the street where I work is right at the other end so I caught the tram up and in that very short period of time this freak storm came in and so I literally just got off the tram with my non waterproof camera and uh, took a few shots and I, I just grabbed this and I just really liked it because it, it, for me, this was my, 
my best ever street shot when I first started. Uh, it had multiple elements in it. It was in the weather. And I think it just captured the moment really well. It's, I, lo I love black and white images. Um, yeah, and it, it was with my primer. I literally just walked off the tram and took this shot. These are all the people I got off the tram with me. So, yeah. No, I agree, man. It's got, I like that bit of hair that's just coming up. Yeah. yeah. It's a great little detail. It was, a, it was a complete freak storm that literally was there in, for 20 minutes and then was gone. And then the sun came back out. You would have thought it was the middle of winter, but it was actually... Uh, it was quite warm as well. It was just this freak storm that came in. Mm. And so again, you know, going on the uh, theme of Adelaide weather being, you know, all sunny and bright. I have to, I have to admit, Adrian, this wasn't Adelaide. So I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I've, I've screwed up a bit because some of the images I sent aren't all, all of Adelaide. And I do apologise for that, people. So where are we so travelling to? I'm in the heart of Adelaide most of the time. And some pictures are from other cities that I've been into. So I guess, I guess for me, this... I included this shot because this is from my uh, sister-in-law's balcony in Sydney. And uh, again, it was in summer and uh, I'd been eyeing off this spot. And again, a storm came in and I've always got my camera with me. And so I just went out on the balcony. I was huddled underneath an umbrella on a balcony getting absolutely soaked. Just waiting for someone with an umbrella to walk through this scene that I pictured in my mind. And it, and this person just stopped and stood there while they were on the phone right where I needed them to be. So, um, again, just right place at the right time. And I just, I'd visualized this scene so many times. I'd taken a few photos and it hadn't really worked because it was a bit boring with no weather and the light wasn't very good there. The shadows weren't there. So, um, and then the storm came in and I just took it and I just really liked it. But you, just, you decided to keep this one in color, I see. Yes, I did. I like this. I like this one in color. I, sh I shoot everything in color, but sometimes I make the decision whether I want it in color or black and white. And I, uh, I like the the way the flat, the frame was split, with uh, the, just the plain red bricks, and the black umbrella would pop a bit more on them. And I like the if it was black and white, it would look quite plain. I think. Um, yes. Yeah, so I left it color, and I, I really like it. Lots of other people like it too, but it was. My, my sister-in-law was actually a professional photographer and she couldn't believe that I was stuck, stuck on this balcony getting absolutely soaked just to get that shot. So and I, when I got it, it made, it made getting wet with every penny, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I quite like the do not queue up there of the single person yeah. her own exactly. queue. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's really cool. It, that, those are the things that you all start to look for. And, um, as I, as I progress with my street, I start to see more coincidences like that. And I guess to a certain degree, I've been quite lucky uh, in how I do see the world. I'm quite perceptive and um, I just see how things come together. I, I don't really plan a lot of my shots. It just happen and I just see things very quickly and, da -da -da, and it happens. And of course, you know, with street, it doesn't always happen. You so know, when you're out there. 90% of your shots don't work. So the, the thing is just to keep shooting. Are you a hunter or a fisher when you're out there? Um, both. <laughs> I've I've been I have been I do I give a I give a scene I always look for scenes, and um, I'll give a place maybe five or ten minutes. Uh, top some I think the longest I've waited was twenty minutes, and then no one ever came around, and then I went and looked at this alley where no one was ever going to come around because it was all fenced off and uh, no one could walk through. So I wasted twenty minutes to standing. It, waiting for someone to walk through a dead end. So I always check those things now. <laughs> you live and learn it. Roots. Just do a building shot of no people like you started <laughs> off. I've started doing that as well through COVID, Adrian. I'm starting to uh, branch out a little bit. I've seen some of that. I do more abstract way. stuff. Ah, okay. So, so this shot was taken. Um, I was out with another street photographer in Adelaide called Backwater Beat, Derek. Yep. And um, you probably know, I think he's an Aspie member as well. And we just came across these kids sitting in the alleyway hanging out. And uh, I started taking some shots. And then they, they said, what are you doing? So we're just taking some photos of you. They said, do you want us to pose? And we're like, just keep doing what you're doing. So um, they did. After about five minutes, I forgot that we were there. And uh, I, I got some great shots. And uh, I've got a couple of other ones. And they were nice kids. They were just mucking around, just hanging out. And I just like the fact that we were just uh, sitting in a, there's lots of sort of, you know what Melbourne's like, Adelaide's a little bit the same, not quite as extensive, but we have these 
little alleyways that look like it could be the UK or New York or anything, all red brick warehouse type things. And they were just in the right place. Normally, there's nobody down here. It's at the back of shops. So normally, there's just people in the bins, but these kids were hanging out. So it was awesome. not a shop. Touch on the point that you said, where you said the kids saw you and asked you what you were doing. So yeah. have you had any many negative experiences in Adelaide with shooting people? Like, is Adelaide Crow supporters or anything like that? Well, we all know that Adelaide Crow supporters are uh, gentlemen and ladies. It's the <laughs> Port Adelaide fans that are feral, mate. Um, no, uh, in Adelaide, it's I've, I've had very few negative uh, issues with people. Most people uh, have seen me photographing, and uh, I've had people approach me and ask me what I'm doing. I photograph anyone and anything, and... Uh, as long as I'm, I've learned the laws and I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do, I photograph police. I don't care. If you're in the right light or you're in the right situation, I will photograph you. Do you still carry around a business card with you? Yes, I still have a business card. So that was one of the things I learned. So um, instead of trying to get people... So what happens is if someone comes up to me... It, all right, so even though I have a legal... My belief is that even though I have a legal right to photograph anything and anyone, doesn't mean that I should enforce that right if someone is unhappy about me taking their photo. So if they, if they approach me and say, do you take my photo? I never ever, if I have, I never ever ever say no, I didn't. I always tell them I did. And then of course that leads to why. And then I explain what I do. And then I show them what I do. I show them my Instagram account. And then nine times out of 10, as soon as they realize that what you do is actually a little bit party, they go, no problem. I've had two people who said, can you please delete the photo? One was a clean outside a pub, and it wasn't a very good shot anyway, so I deleted it. And the other one was a German tourist. So it was coincidentally taking photos of people, <laughs> but he didn't like me taking a photo of him. So uh, I just, when it gets to that, just delete it. There'll be somebody else. So what I did was, instead of telling people what my Instagram account was, I just got out a, uh, I got some cheap cards made up, and then I just hand them out and said, look, if you want the image, I'll send it to you. But no one, everybody goes, that's great, lovely. And no one ever contacts you. So, um, yeah, I've had very few issues. Unlike in Melbourne with you, where that guy kicked off. Over nothing. <laughs> yes, over nothing. That, yeah, laid back Melbourne people, bollocks. <laughs> oh, I think he was responding to the Adelaide people over here, just giving you a special show. <laughs> you must have saw that phone like, badge on your chest. Yeah, I haven't had uh, too many uh, issues with anybody really Absolutely. anyway so yeah uh, is this are we back in adelaide yeah this is back in adelaide so uh oh god what's the artist's name so, so I, I was talking to a bloke so this is the other thing as well i tried to get inspired by the people man i forgot what his name is that's bloody terrible so there's a painter that paints street scenes do you probably you probably know him Andrew? australian painter anyway he's got work in the uh, in the uh, melbourne gallery so this this bloke who's also a photographer in one of the coffee shops that i used to go to uh he picked up that was a photographer and he was saying he, i showed him my instagram he said your work reminds me of man it's so bad i can't remember his name i'll have to look him up um just sorry john but yeah jeffrey smart thank you can i ask everybody to just put themselves on mute please we're getting some noise in the background and we'll get back to john sorry john for that no 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 you're fine i think someone just chimed in who it was Thank you very much, whoever that was, Jeffrey Smart. Okay. So um, I looked him up and I thought, wow, he's fantastic. I never heard from him before. So I just started looking at his work online on, on Google and I thought I'll try to go out and find uh, a scene where I could try to replicate what, uh, what Jeffrey was painting or what he saw. And that was the best thing I could come up with at the time. I just liked the yellow lines and the, yeah, and the, and the light. And, and, and the lad coming down and the stairs. And it's a bit Jeffrey Smart, I guess, but it's probably not as good as his stuff. But it was one of my, this was early on in my street photography. So I tried to, I, I learned from other people and I learned how they framed their shots. And even like, you know, artists like Jeffrey Smart, they're all very simple, they do similar things. So that's that's where I get my inspiration from other people. And um, and yeah, this, this, is, this is my attempt at Jeffrey Smart. I don't know if it's any good. I'm sure you'll tell me if it's crap in mean, the questions. Uh, <laughs> nice curved lines and some nice straight lines at the top. And this yeah. one's a bit more. Oh, 
yeah. So a bit of Jaxter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I love seeing scenes like this, and I'd already taken a shot earlier of of this. The, the trams have got great art on them, and they're always going across, and and you don't ever get obstructions generally. And this was actually on a <laughs> at the university. I'd just been over to somewhere to do part of my my job, and I take my camera everywhere, and I was just walking back and. The tram pulled up and this this person was standing there with a striped t-shirt on and I just and he seemed to be looking at the guy scratching his crack. So I thought that's gotta be a good shot. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, when I first started, Adrian, you probably know I took a lot of shots like this because it was it's a little bit easier and I was always looking for that junk stuff. I didn't even know what that meant. That's how noob I was, you know what I mean? So um and before I progressed on to other things and then yeah, I just took the shot, I just liked it. I like it. It's, I, I like comedy on the street. That's what I like. I'll go on to. Yeah. Okay, so, so this one, this is quite a, I can't remember the artist for this as well. He's done paintings. This is his particular style. And we've got quite a lot of images that this artist has done. Uh, I think he's from London. And um, it's photographed a lot. It's photographed a lot. So, and of course, I've taken a shot dead on. But I wanted to try to capture this wonderful piece of art in a way that somebody else hadn't, apart from straight on. So directly opposite is is a office building with you know glass and stairs going up. They all work upstairs. And I started looking at the reflection in there, and there was these two girls just talking, and and I just waited and waited and waited for them to do something interesting because just talking, it would have been an all right shot, but. Then they just sort of pointed at each other in the middle of the conversation. And then that's when I took the shot because I like gestures as well. I like mm. capturing people doing gestures. I know it's, it's a bit cliche, but that's what I like. And uh, I managed to, um, as you can see, it's like a bike wheel there and a helmet. And uh, that was on the other side of the glass. So I wanted to try to, um, a lot of my images can sometimes be not very dimensional. They're quite flat. Uh, it's not that I don't want, it's not that I just like that style. I'm just not particularly good at it. So I try to work. I'm always trying to improve what I do and learn new skills. And this was an opportunity to have multiple layers and reflection, as well as a bit of a scene in the front with the bike and the helmets and the two girls talking and the wonderful art. Anything with a bike gets an extra star from me, mate. You know that. <laughs> well, I'm an ex-cyclist as well, mate. So, and yeah. I like your framing of the stairs sort of going up into a mind and that as well. That's, I don't know if that was deliberate or not. Oh, I, I, I hadn't even even thought of that Adrian it's interesting because sometimes you don't know you only see what you want to see and and that's the thing with street photography people pick out the bits of a that you might not necessarily see and of course you don't always see everything and and you know what you think is a good image when you take it isn't always the best image when you get home and you look at it on the computer and and some of the images that I thought were absolute rubbish when you actually look at them more or on a bigger screen you think wow there's this is something there that I either you missed or you saw it subconsciously. Because sometimes I take photos and think, why did I take that? And then when I, on the back, I think, why did I take it? And then when I get home and I go through them, um, I think, oh, look at all these elements that come together in that. And I, it just, I, I think sometimes you see things without physically thinking about it. You, you see something. So That's what the, I believe. Do you go through your photos straight away or do you let them brew for a few days? Oh, well, when, when I first started, I, I would go through them straight away and I'd post the images that I took that day, the next day. Um, now I shoot too often and I'm still posting images from February. <laughs> so, so I'm just starting to go through my March, April, May, June, July. Well, there's going to be a pause in there somewhere for COVID lockdown where you've got a... Yeah, a there was a few. I've still got a lot of, I've got a lot of COVID images that I've done. I did post a few from my foggy day I think I'll, I'll sh you'll show them later and I've posted a few others that I really really like but I, I yeah I've, I'm backlogged again so yeah. I but I shoot a lot so this was my first ever non-candid street portrait and um, I like portraits I love street portraits and I was I'd just been out my lunch break and uh, I was returning back to work and I'd been shooting down the down Rundle Street and it, it, we had a lot of these pop-up shops because it was in February 2019. So uh, 
because we've got the festivals now on. So we have Adelaide puts a lot of pop-up shops on, and this girl was selling these headdress band things. And I saw her sitting there, and I, I, I had my camera, and I walked past. And I thought she'd look excellent in a photo. And I walked past. She smiled at me, and I just kept walking. And I thought, I got 200 meters down the road. And I said, why don't you just go back and ask if you can take a photo? Nobody likes rejection, yeah? So um, most of the time when I take my shots, I prefer people not to know that I'm taking the shot because I want to capture that person doing what they do in that moment or walking through that scene, totally oblivious to me being there. So anyway, I thought I'd try something different. I'd give it a crack. I said, do you mind if I took your photo? And then I was just about to turn and go, of course you don't want me to take your photo because I'm a pervert. But she said, yeah, I'd love to. So I did. And, and um, this is my first ever portrait shot I ever took of anybody with my camera. And I think it came up pretty good. I really like it. I like the it colors. Does. And she was a really, she's a really nice person, actually, as well. So, yeah. What's wonderful is it doesn't feel posed. It feels like she's talking to somebody off to the right of the frame there or having a... Um... She was. She, okay. she was talking to someone because when I said I can't believe I was talk, I always talk to people because you got to get them to relax. I just thought about like, I like to know who they are when I shoot them, you know. So especially if I've asked somebody to take their photo, I like, I like to learn a little bit about them. So and I, I told her how I felt when I was I was walked past and she said, I saw you look. but And, I, and that's why I smiled. And I went, OK. Well, I was too frightened to ask you and I, to ask you to take your photo. And her friend, her male friend over here said, she was just begging you to stop, hoping you would stop and ask to take a photo. And that's what she, that's when she laughed and I took the picture. At the moment, what awesome. Yeah, and yeah, this. So, yeah. A frothy. Now all us in Melbourne want to get back to a bar and enjoy a frothy. So talk us through the experience. Okay, so like I said earlier, I, I look for light. And um, again, this was during the uh, Adelaide French Festival. And this this bloke was outside just pouring beers and he, he was just beautifully lit. So because I was working with a 35 millimeter prime, which on a sensor, because I know what all this means now. I didn't know it at the time, crop sensor and blah, blah, blah means it's almost 50 you have to get quite close to get in so i'm not backwards and going forwards and uh, i never hide that i'm taking someone's photo i just went straight in and start taking some snaps and he said what are you doing i said oh i'm just taking some snaps of you pouring the beers mate so uh, i said i explained the light now and he went oh yeah yeah he goes i'm a photographer too and so i explained i was a street photographer and this was my first brush with fame, so to speak, because he said, what's your name? I'll uh, check you out on Instagram. And I said, oh, it's Giant Evertonian. And he went, oh, you're the shadow dude. I already follow you. <laughs> so that was a bit of a buzz. I was like, the shadow oh. dude can be taken in two ways, of course, you know. Yeah, but I just I just love it because- um, Now the light just, is gorgeous here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, we have great light in Adelaide. We really do. and. Um, I sent Trent Park from, as you know, from uh, Magnum, uh, originally from New South Wales, lives here now, and he reckons it's the best light in uh, Australia, and who can argue with Trent? So yeah, I, I I looked, I just liked the shot, and it came out really nice. I just liked it, and and I don't overwork any of my images. They're all all my shots are done on Snapseed on my phone. Uh, I shoot raw and I shoot JPEG, but I never process raw because I hate processing. I don't have time. If I have time to process, then I have time to shoot. So anyway, this was taken in during Sitham in my, my four days there. This is in just off Brunswick Street near where I was staying. Yeah. And I was just walking along and I got talking to these people because they saw me shooting a guy across the road. And then I like, I like I'm, I'm attracted to dogs. I just, I just adore them. And I was just talking to this person, the next minute this dog just rolls over and does that. So um, I thought, what a shot. <laughs> Did I got you quite a few shots. Afterwards? He was quite a poser, actually. So uh, I got some nice portrait shots of him. And uh, he was he was so cute. I just took this shot, but it just, yeah, it just happened. Awesome. I shoot anything. And another one in Melbourne, I'm guessing. Yes, I was sorry, there's quite a few Melbourne 
the shots. I do apologize. I should be shot in the hand in Melbourne. Um, I think I took this on. This was the night, the, the morning after system. I think uh, when we met up, uh, myself, you, Dom, backwater beat, and uh, I just, I just like this lady, and um, I like the wording. You're in the, and I thought frame. So, and then I noticed that this tram pulled up, and it said, "You have the will." <laughs> You're in the frame, so uh, that's that's why I, I did it. And she just, thank, I don't know, it just happened. It, she, thankfully, she just stopped to check something in her pocket, and then everything just came together in the one spot. And I I really liked that because it was, if I hadn't have been ready or um, it was gone in a second, that tram was moving, and uh, I sh it looks like it's frozen, but I always shoot at about a thousandth of a second. And um, I want to, that's another thing I've been working on is uh, is uh, movement and s slower shutter speeds. But um, I, I normally want to just freeze everything as I, in that moment. So but again, something... that's just my lack of experience and I'm trying to learn new techniques all the time. So, so when you're out in the street, what mode do you shoot in? Do you shoot shutter, aperture or well, manual? No, um, when I first started with my Nikon, I shot in, I shot in shutter priority. And now, now I shoot with my Fuji, I shoot 100% manual, everything. I don't even have auto ISO, I, I just shoot, I just like it. I, I like the organic nature of the Fuji and um, I, I like the tactile feel of it. And I just love shooting for me to create the image exactly how I want it. Yes, I do miss shots from time to time, especially when I first got the Fuji, I would forget that it was totally manual and I would have my eyes so wrong and things like that. But it, it's like what they say, you, you can all, if you shoot enough and uh, you start to realize it or understand exactly almost where you should be with your settings. And it's, I was overwhelmed when I first started, but now I, I, I just do it automatically. You know, if it's a little bit too dark, you know, and open up your, yeah, aperture and touch more or whatever. I still like everything sharp. I generally shoot f8, f11. Um, but I'm just, you know, if I can't, if I can't get my hands to my ISO, I just open up my aperture a little bit more or flick my button over to, to lower my shutter speed just a touch. So I shoot totally in manual, and I, and I have to say that's when my photography really improved because I can control pretty much. How I want the shot to look, yeah, you get and I generally shoot well. under and expose my images because I want to have that. I expose for highlights, and then it darkens everything generally. But this was I shot this in um, Acros, I think, because it was a very dull day, and so uh, when it's a dull day, I shoot in black and white because I prefer to see the world that way. Yeah. When it's dull, I have trouble when it's dull seeing so shots. I'm going to talk ah, about this. This I'm was going to talk about you first, John, and then I'll let you go because I took you to this spot. I remember, yes. and you you got your shot here. Yeah. Then you put it up at sit home and you sold it, and I'm still waiting for my commission. <laughs> I'll let you go. Oh, uh, your commission is a beer, Adrian. And I, unfortunately, I haven't been able to give back. Um, th this was all down to you. I would have never found this spot, and. Um, you just said, have a look over the wall. I think it's a, there's a bench or something you stand on from memory or something like that. Is that right, Adrian? That's right, yep. Yeah. So, and you said, just stand on the bench and have a look over there and see what you think. And it was like, oh, this is amazing. The sun was just coming through. I think it was, it was near the end of our shoot, so it was about one o'clock in the afternoon or something. We've been right, walking yeah. around for about five or six hours. So, um, and it just so happened that there was a person sitting on the stairs on the phone. And um, just sitting quietly doing what they do. And I just basically took a really quick couple of shots and it, it, I didn't even really frame it or anything. It just worked out well. So um, it's, just per it's just exactly how I like it. But I call, I think I call it, um, I forgot what I called it now. Something, something connected, but blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm bloody hopeless with things like that. So yeah, isolated, but still connected, I think I called it. <laughs> ah, okay, so this isn't one of my best shots. This is what I found interesting about street photography. 
you take an image and then you don't realize how important it is until later. Now I took this shot because they were walking through nice light. Now these two, this couple here married, they had two like whippets and I'd seen them every morning, every morning without fail, Monday to Friday when I was having my coffee, walking these two whippets. And then one day, uh, they only had one dog. So I stopped them and uh, got into a conversation. I said, what's happened to your other dog? And I said, oh, unfortunately he passed away. He was sick and he died. So, because I'm a dog lover anyway, I felt terrible. So I said, look, I think I've got a photo of you guys doing what you always do. And then first of all, they were like, what, you've been taking photos of us? I'm like, it's okay. It's, it's perfectly, it's not sleazy or anything like that. So I gave them my card. They're on an antique shop in Adelaide. So um, I gave them my card and I said, look, just send me a message and uh, I'll have a look through all my images. I'll go back. Because I never processed this. I just, it was one of my rejected ones. I, I liked it, but I, not enough to post. So um, I dug it out and I, I did this. I, had it in co I did it in color and black and white. And now they've... Um, I liked it because it was just to capture that they would never ever be able to get themselves doing what they'd done for years. And I think their dog was 12 or something. They'd done it for 12 years. And um, yeah, I sent them the image and they're gonna print it up and it's all framed now. That's a lot story, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, but you don't, you don't realize how important an image is until, um, you know, it yeah. wasn't that important to me, but it was really important to them. And that's that's what I found with Street. You, you might just take an image that doesn't mean much, but, uh, you don't know what it's going to mean 12 months from now. Right, this, this again, this was, this is not one of the, I really like this shot because this dude was, this is in Perth. I found really hard to shoot in Perth. I've got some, I've got some really nice shots in Perth, but geez, it was difficult, really difficult. If you think Adelaide's dead, go to Perth. Geez, there's nobody there. Big city, no people, nobody. It's empty. And also there's a quite a significant homeless issue in Perth. There's lots and lots and lots of homeless people everywhere. So um, I find it difficult to shoot um, when there's people in those situations. I don't photograph homeless people in general. And I'm very careful about not, not exposing those people to my uh, taking an image. Anyway, so this dude was sitting in this, in this corporate office foyer and um, and it was all lit with marble. And he was just obviously waiting to go in for an interview or something like that. He was on his phone and he looked all nervous. And so thanks to backwater beating yourself, Adrian, I've learned how to do silhouettes. So, <laughs> so I thought, because he was quite a dark person. And uh, I thought he's going to look fantastic against that white marble. So I, uh, I set my cam up to do a silhouette and it actually worked out quite well. I was surprised because the glass was quite reflective and I was quite a distance away. Um, I did crop quite a lot into this shot. Uh, yeah, and it came, I really like it. it. It just gave me the feel of this bloke almost in the crosshairs as he's about to go into an interview yeah, and get his head shot. Nice and, and this is the first ah. I remember. Yes, this is Perth too. And this, believe it or not, is right across the road. So this is what I had my eye on uh, to, to have a shot because there are no people in Perth. So if I'm looking at, this is the other thing I've learned as well. If you're so concentrated on a scene, I'll look, I've got my eye on that scene or whatever, but I'm always looking left, right behind me. Always, 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 always. And that's how I got that last shot. And then after I got that shot, these, these two lovers, lovebirds, were just coming up on the escalator. And again, I thought this is going to be a great shot to be silhouetted. And um, yeah, it's down at the bus station near, at the bottom of the, uh, near the Swan River there. So yeah, I, I really liked it. And he was, he was just, she was looking at him and he was looking down at her like all lovey-dovey and Super John took the snap. Very nice, very color monochrome. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right, so he, he's a good example of what you, why it's good to have friends. So I shoot with another lad called uh, Sir Brider, another lad that I met, one of the first people I've met in Adelaide through Instagram. Uh, he does uh, lots of different types of photography. And he, he rung me up 
and he said, John, it's going to be a foggy morning. And he works construction, so he's a construction worker. And I said, right, Beach, his name's VJ. What time? He said, five o'clock. And I went, nah, nah, I'm not getting up at five. Nah, I'm not doing it, mate. Not on a work day. He said, well, I'm going to be there. So anyway, I didn't get up at five. I drove into the city and instant to go to work and instantly I knew I'd made a monumental error and I should have got up at five o'clock because this shot was just taken on my walk into work. Again, um, she was just, there's a park there called Rymel Park and I've, because of COVID, I've been parking, I've given up, I've given up my paid car park space at the uni to save money and uh, I've been walking in. So I walk in 5Ks or five Ks, and so I'm I'm starting to walk through areas that I never really used to photograph because it's this is a park, and I've had my eye on this park for a while, but it's not a huge park, and if you can see cars on either end of it, but so through the day, this would look bog average. It wouldn't be a very nice shot. There's all this stuff behind it, like a kiosk, and there, there's cars parked over there and stuff like it. it's a playground. It's not nice. But in fog, wow, just transformed the shot. And this was my first ever uh, time in fog. I've never photographed them. I was really worried that I was going to, I didn't know how to do my settings and uh, I just had to fiddle around with it and uh, to get a nice shot. And thankfully, I just saw this lady walking down the path and uh, the sun was, the sun uh, is over in, this, in the background. So it lit all the fog up and uh, it just, again, silhouetted. Um, thanks to Adrian and Backwater Beat for showing me that. It looks so, like you got more than one shot there. Yeah, I did. So I, literally all of all of my fog shots were taken in 30 minutes on my walk to work. I, I, I always have a coffee before I go to work, but I gave it up for the fog. So um, this is this is a shot that I've been looking at over and over. I, liked, I didn't even realize we had a bloody bridge in this park, right? So I walk, walk into my car, I thought, he's bridge. And I've, I've, I've been shooting this, this scene of people walking over the bridge for the last three weeks. And it doesn't work because on the other side of the bridge, just in behind the fog there, is all parked cars. And it looks terrible. And you can't, it's very hard to, uh, to use depth of field on it because you're so far away, yeah, it doesn't work. So I try, 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 try. It's funny, mate. I was going to say, couldn't you arrange a duck here? And I had a look and I realised he's over there. There is a duck. <laughs> there is a duck. There is. There is a duck. So, uh, so yeah, I took it again in the fog and I, I, I got lucky. That's why the person on the bridge there is not quite lined up in the middle because I saw three, pe three people all at once. Frightening, all right? Especially through COVID in Adelaide, right? Like that. And I lined them all up to have them all subframed. Uh, it, the two people on the left subframed as by the trees. So that's why the person on the bridge isn't quite in the middle. But, you know, what do you do? It's good enough. Right. This was, again, taken out with friends. So uh, as soon as it rains, what do you do? You go out and you shoot umbrellas. So I had got... This is just... And believe it or not, this is in Rundle Mall. And I got so incredibly lucky. I don't shoot on burst mode. I just shoot... My Fuji's quite quick, but I just press the... Da -da 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 -da. So um, I can maybe get th three, maybe five shots up sometimes, but they're quite staggered. So I'd eyed off this new, this new short store backdrop. Uh, it was just a hoarding that they were re-renovating the store, I think Sapporo or something, bollocks like that. And I just saw this girl coming along with a, like a, this is actually, a, it was a white or a silver, quite a silver umbrella. And I just lined up the shot and bing, I took it. I didn't, I was hoping that I was going to get everything lined up. And then it wasn't until I got back and looked at it that I realized that everything had just lined up perfectly when I took it. The best thing about it was no one, the whole mall, it was a Friday night. The whole mall was covered in people. And I just, I took, I stood at this spot trying to get this shot of an umbrella walking past this backdrop. Um, for about 15 minutes and I think I took about 150 shots and this is the only one that I, I've got a few others but this is the only one that really worked out really well you only and need again, one to Adrian, work mate you only need one yeah, to work it, yeah, and it's like you got to 15 you only had 5 minutes left according to your self timer before you had to move on yeah 
I, I was out with friends. Oh, here's another one. Again, it was raining, and I thought, what am I going to do to be creative? Because I like light and shadow, and that's, that's where I get my kicks. And I thought, oh, I'll just see if I can get a reflection. And uh, this business dude, it's not perfectly in focus, but I still like it. Um, he just walked by with, he almost walked right over the top of me. <laughs> just didn't give a shit that I was there. And it, it, I just took the shot and it worked out really good. And his blue pants matches everything. And I like the brown shoe and the reflection, the yellow, the, the prime colors. Yeah, it was just, I was just practicing reflection shot and it came out really well. I'm going to say, mate, it does seem to rain a lot in Adelaide. Yeah. So again, here, totally, totally, it was raining. I thought, oh, I'll go out in my lunch break. And uh, I was, I went down the mall. I hardly ever go down the mall. And uh, who should I bump into but the old mate, Sir Rider V. He'd just been given the, the afternoon off because it was peeing down. And he was out shooting umbrellas as well. So anyway, he says to me, Let's go up into the car park, to the Target car park at Pulte Street. And I'm like, I don't want to go up to the car park. He goes, just let's go up to the car park. I don't want to go up to the car park. Let's just go up for 10 minutes. I went, okay, I'll go up to the car park. And I got this shot. So incredibly lucky. So uh, he was there when I was watching it. And um, there were so many people. I just wanted to isolate. And this bloke came across late. And um, <laughs> most of the time, most of the people, they cut the corner. They don't actually walk straight. They come across here. It's like one of those mountain crossings. And I was, I was praying, praying, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. And ping, got it. That was it. And it had, if it hadn't been for Sir Rider and DJ, I wouldn't have got that shot because he, he nagged me to go up there and I didn't want to go up. So this is why sometimes it's good to go with friends. Otherwise, I'll be in a beer as well. Sorry? I'm sorry? I'm taking a beer for it. <laughs> oh, trust me, I bought them plenty. <laughs> Again, uh, this is this is uh, something I learned from you as well, Adrian. Um, using using very uh, and I don't look. I'm a noob, or right? I'm not. I'm not a skilled uh, top photographer and all that. I, I just expose for the highlight, and I use the black backdrop, um, and, and it came up. And I know from watching what Adrian's done before, I learned from that. Um, it, it really just makes it look like a floating hat. So I've always been looking for this. And this poor bloke, I followed him all the way down the mall and for about 400 meters before he knew, before he knew I was taking a photo of him. Like, and he's actually, to, to, and, and thankfully also, uh, what also caught my eye, he, he looked um, either Sri Lankan or Indian and he was quite dark. So um, I thought this bright white hat, hat here at about 11 o'clock in the morning, is going to look fantastic because his face will naturally darken out against that black backdrop. So um, I just went along and every time he went past a dark shop window or a dark thing, bing, took another photo of bless him. So I've got a few of this dude and also with his wife and she just looks like she's uh, got no head either and just a wig floating, uh, just their white hair, blonde hair and this, this dude's hat. So, but I really liked it. And also when I got back, it looks like a frog. If you look at the eyes and stuff. Oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, more, more like uh, Zippy from uh, Rainbow, if anybody's from England. Uh, after yeah. that beer you owe me, it might look more like a frog, but we'll... we'll... <laughs> so, oh, okay, so this is... It. So I started a small collective in Adelaide um, just for people who were um, wanting to learn how to street shoot. So we just meet up for coffee and we go out shooting. And this is where I walk past this spot all of the time, but I'd never seen a light like this. It was on a weekend at about uh, 11.30 in the morning. We've been out shooting for about four hours. So, and I, I just really liked the scene. I liked the fact that it was uh, nice shadows and the fact that it was red. And uh, I liked the, the shadow of the, the lights on the wall. I liked this police sign, the little red man. And then this poor, there's just this poor bloke. He just looked like he had the whole world on his shoulders. Just wandered through the scene, and I took it. I got the shot. So really, I just I just looked for a scene, and then some. It was like you said, Edwin. And sometimes it's not just about getting a photo of anybody walking through the scene. It's about getting 
the right person walking through the scene. And for me, this was the the right person because literally he'd just been to the shops and he looked like he had the whole world on his shoulders. He just looked so downtrodden. But literally, I think it was just because he was carrying a lot of crap from the market. You know what I mean? No, I understand what you're saying. And the four lease sign there sort of helps with that same story and that as well, I think. Yeah. And, the, and the stock. Yeah. It's, and, uh, it, I agree. So, again, this one now, a bit of reflections off the Yamaha. So, again, I had my camera with me at work. This is actually in a work. I was at I was having to escort a whole contingent of uh, Chinese delegation around the university. And my work, because I found out I've got a camera, have asked me now to take photos. And I had to follow, I had to shadow them the whole day, taking photos of uh, talking to important people and being walking around, walking around the uni. I was getting bored. I was bored out of my brain. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the same shot over and over again. And then we went to the music area and they were showing them... Uh, all the recording students that we got to uni, and of course, you know, the piano and the drums and all. And then I just happened to, they were all filing past this window and they're all sort of semi silhouetted. I thought, right, well, that would be an interesting shot, but what would be better? Oh, here's a piano. And uh, I just took the, the shot of the reflection of them. Um, Very nice, man. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. So this is, so this is a shot that I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I've been, I've been trying to follow older photographers, and Saul Leiter is a is a person that I've, I'm, I really like now. I never knew who he was, and a few other people have mentioned him, so I looked him up. And yeah, I've just been trying to do some interesting things with reflections and uh, a bit abstracty, and um, I've been a bit obsessed with shot dummies at the moment. So I've got a shot wherever there's nice light. I like to take a shot. So. I've already got another shot of this uh, window facade and because um, I, I, I walk past it every morning, I just took another shot and I, it's pretty much framed exactly how I wanted it. And then I just stood and looked at the, <laughs> in the glass until someone walked past and then the right person walked past with the right spread of the legs and I like the shadow of his feet coming down and you can just barely see him ever so slightly highlighted. So. I did shoot this quite dark, underexposed, but I like that because it shows the light a lot more than... Oh, it's beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah, this, I, how about we go with the last one? Oh, okay. So this, this is, I took this out with backwater beat. Here's when you look for a scene and you have to find the right person. Now, I had my eye on this scene for six months. So, and every time I couldn't find a person that was right, never. I was being, yeah, you know, be male, be female. I just wanted someone to go through with a red jacket or something like that, you know. I like the I like the the, the abstracty stuff on the walls there, the geometry, and, and I like the Jibo with the points and the red, and then the red hydrant, and then the, the anyway. I liked it. I liked it. it's a scene, and then it just so happened I was just standing there with with Derek, and we both we both spotted this dude with the red shoes, and I'm like, I can't believe it. I just can't believe this dude after six months of coming back to this spot, maybe once or twice a week and not having anybody. And again, thankfully it was quite a busy day and a few people had gone through with, with red on, but there was always someone in the frame or a car had gone past. It's, it's on Hindley street in the, in the city, which is a uh, quite a busy street for Adelaide. And um, yeah, I got this shot and that's it. That's it. I'm done now. I'm happy with that. But awesome. those big red shoes, man. Amazing. Just so, a coincidence. So wrap it up, man. Give us some tips for us Melbourne people if we're going to come across to Adelaide and do some shooting. Just come across. But after COVID, thanks. No, <laughs> if you want to come... A, yeah, your, your Premier did the best thing ever for us. No offence to South Australia, but who want to go there? You're absolutely right. Thank you very much for that. You keep over there, you love. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, come over. Um, Adelaide's only small, but it's got some fantastic streets. The light's great. Um, I recommend that you shoot any time of the day because uh, um, some of our streets are quite narrow and we have we don't have super tall buildings, but we have lots of reflected glass and, and, and uh, glass buildings are light reflecting to those areas really, really nicely. And I just recommend that you walk around. Now, I've had a few people from a Fuji group that I belong to that have come um, to Adelaide and uh, we never caught up, but They've been really surprised at how uh, how easy it is to shoot here. 
Um, like I said, if you like isolated subjects and you like taking all sorts of images, then Adelaide's really good for that. Um, but sometimes you do have, to, in the same time, you have to wait a while um, for someone to actually come into your frame. But uh, yeah, I, re I love Adelaide. It's one of my favorite places to shoot. But then I like to shoot in any city. That's the challenge when you go. I guess wherever you live, you're going to uh, become accustomed to where the light is and at the best streets and where the people are going to be at certain times of the day. Um, but when you go to a new city, that's, that's the challenge. Walk around and explore it. You'll see a lot more. You awesome. know that. You're all street photographers. You know. So thanks, man. We've enjoyed having a chat with a few 28-odd uh, people just um, you know, watching us having a chat. So I'll hand over to Sue now and see if thanks. there's any questions. Um, thanks, Adrian. Anyone else other than me? Thank you. Right. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks so much, John. So we've got a couple of questions, John. Are you ready for mm. this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, um, we saw your image that you sh that you sold in Sitom last year. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll run, we were wondering, uh, can we see the South Australian Living Artist finalist image? I haven't got it there. Oh, come on. Is it on your Insta? Yes, it is. It's, um, it is on my Insta. It's, um, again, I took it. I, 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 some people say you shouldn't go shooting at certain times of the day. I think that, for me, that is absolute rubbish. So the shot that I put uh, submitted uh, for uh, the Adelaide City Council, um, got picked up for an award, was 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, height of the day in summer. And literally, there's a big red building called uh, Bunyip Tours. And uh, I'd, I'd been sitting for 10 minutes, hoping that the right person would come along. And again, it's a quite a busy intersection during the um, afternoon. Lots of offices and people going there for lunch. And then this little old lady just wandered up in a red jacket. And then uh, the sun was in her eyes. And then she just put her hand up to look down the street. And then, bang, got the shot. So, uh, and then I went, home, and I went back to work really happy. So uh, I've never been so happy to get back to work and see what I caught. So um, yeah, it, it's that. So if you look on my Instagram, it, it, it was about at least be a year ago. So uh, you'll have to scroll down a bit. Yeah. Well, you've got 2,307 posts, man. There's a bit of scrolling down. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a prolific poster. I post two images most of the time every day. One in the morning and one at the night. Wow. So uh, when you're on the streets of Adelaide, do you ever bump into your mate Trent? No, I haven't. <laughs> I wish I had, but I'd probably be a bit starstruck. I'd be like, Trent, love your work, mate. Nah, you would probably go get away. How many street photographers are there in Adelaide, John? It's interesting because when I first started about two years ago, I didn't know too many at all. But I would say there's at least 12 decent ones that I know of. But uh, if I see anybody out walking the streets with a camera in lunchtime or anything like that, um, boom, I just approach them. <laughs> yeah. Straight away. So I just met another another young lad. He was out sitting and he was looking at his camera and he was taking some shots. Uh, he had a Sony. Um, sorry, Sony shooters. He had a Sony. But he actually, uh, I just went up and had a chat with him and he said he was a street photographer too. So uh uh, he, we followed each other on Instagram and yeah, he's, he's pretty good. I like what he does. He does a lot of uh, old buildings and sort of that washed out type look, but yeah. So there's quite a few and I've met, I've met quite a few on the street and uh, there was a lad that's just moved to Melbourne. He's a French lad. I'd been talking to him for about 80 months, but we never got a, a chance to catch up. And then one day I was out shooting with my friend BJ again. I do shoot generally a lot by myself, but I do like shooting with friends every now and again. And uh, this, this lad walked up to me and said, uh, you wouldn't happen to be giant Evertonian, would you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. He said, I knew it was you. I saw the Fuji and I saw what you were shooting and then the, the light and the shadow, I knew it was you. And we've been corresponding for 18 months, but never had a chance to, uh, to catch up. He, he shoots quite differently to me. So, um, and he shoots like those as well, and film. So um, he's moved to Melbourne now during COVID. I don't know what he was thinking, but anyway, I think he's moved there for uh, other <laughs> reasons. I don't. I don't think he planned to move there, but yeah, it's been on the card for a while. That's yeah. David Bemmy, isn't it? Sorry, is that David Bemmy you're talking about? Yeah, that's right, David Bemmy. So 
it was interesting because I'd been talking to him for a while and, and, and one day I was going through my shots and I actually got a photograph of him photographing somebody. And I, I didn't notice him until I got until I got back and I, I'm thinking, sure, it's David. So I sent I said, is that you? And he went, yeah. And we'd literally been maybe eight meters apart and we'd still, it was like ships in the night. <laughs> So, so John, you mentioned um, your your love for Fuji a fair few times. What is your association with Fuji and Fuji shooters? Um, well, when I first started, uh, like I said, I just bought a cheap Nikon because I want I wanted to buy a really expensive camera, all right? And I, I and my wife's like, well, you love expensive things, but what happens if you don't like it? So she was right, and I didn't know what to do, so I bought a Nikon, and then. The more I went through Instagram and the, the more I started to look at other people's work, um, I just, I could almost pick, like, that's got to be a Fuji camera. Fuji, Fuji, Fuji. I could just, I just like the the colour palette and stuff that Fuji's have. And so then I, I started reading up on them and I liked, I liked how you can alter everything, just your exposure triangles really easy and I liked the aperture on the ring and all of that. So I, I just went and pulled the trigger and... Melbourne and bought myself an XT3 and then told my wife over the phone <laughs> that I just bought an XT3 with uh, three lenses and uh, a lot of batteries and yeah, a few other things. So yeah, that's how brave I am. I had to do it in Melbourne over the phone. So um, I haven't I haven't regretted it for a second. But through that, I got to um, I got in, there's a Fuji group uh, called Fuji X Oz. That I joined, and they're, they're, they're a really, really nice group, and they're all situated all over Australia. And um, I'm, I'm one of the few. There's a few street photographers on there, but they mainly shoot portraits and other sorts of stuff. It's for all genres. And so I just started posting on there, and then they asked me if I would be interested in hosting uh, a Fuji sort of chapter in South Australia for Adelaide because they had a number of people there. So I agreed, and we did one photo walk. And just because people wanted to learn how to do street and I, I don't know, they seem to think I'm okay at it. So I said, yeah, sure, I'd organise a meet. And then unfortunately COVID kicked in not long after. So we haven't had another meet since then, but I've been thinking about maybe, you know, things here in South Australia aren't too bad. So yeah, I don't have, I'm a, I'm a Fuji X Oz rep for the Facebook group, but that's all really. I'm, I don't have any affiliation with Fuji apart from I'm a fanboy. <laughs> Oh, there's a few street photographers that use uh, Fuji. I know that uh, Julia Coddington's a big fan of Fuji. I, I just love them. I just, I just love them. And like I said, I, uh, I shoot J, I shoot RAW and JPEG, but I don't, I don't have time to process uh, RAW images. I know that's terrible. Um, but I love everything that comes out with, with the JPEG. And I'm only posting on social media generally. And all, all the images I've printed are all from JPEGs. Yeah. So uh, that's how good that's how good the quality is of uh, Fuji cameras. And yeah. I'm not. This isn't a paid thing. I just love Fuji. I will talk about them all day long. <laughs> that, I that love thing. them. <laughs> um, Talking, thinking about you know posting to Instagram. So that leads quite nicely into one of our questions. How do you decide whether a shop whether a shot is a keeper yeah. or something you'd post to Instagram? Um, you have help curating your shots. No, I don't have any help. I just, I guess when you first start, you think all of your shots are great. And, you know, and you, you get quite excited when you get something. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that as you get, as you progress and you shoot more and more and more, you start to realise that maybe your earlier shots weren't as good as you thought. And um, I, I'm, I'm just a lot pickier now about what I... <gasps> Consider that, that's the harder thing because, like I, like I said, I shoot a lot. Uh, I do shoot a lot. Like I think that today I shot 100 images in my lunch break, um, and I just I don't know. I just got to the, I've got to know a feeling about what's going to be good and what's going to be bad. But um, I, I I don't know. I just I don't try to force an image. That was I guess when I first started, you you take a photo and you think it's going to be a banger, and then you get it home and you go. Hmm. I wonder what I can do on post-processing with this. And I would, I would fudge it a bit with my Snapseed and, you know, 
but just and because I was shooting um, shutter priority and leaving the camera to choose the aperture, I wasn't getting the look that I wanted mm. uh, because I didn't know what I was doing. So I would try to post process it. So and it doesn't always work like that. So um, I just realised that if a shot, if you haven't to fiddle with the shot too much. Look, I do, I do post process. I'm not saying I don't. I use, like I said, I use Snapseed. Um, I don't change things a whole lot. I do crop quite a bit sometimes, um, especially if I'm shooting primes because I, I think I've been run over, nearly run over so many times trying to get a shot. It's just not worth it. So I think I'll just shoot and crop. But um, yeah, I've just become pickier. So I just go, no, 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 yes. So I go through all my images and I just pick the ones that I think uh, um, look okay. Uh, and then I move them over to my phone. And when I'm having my coffee, that's when I do my post-processing. So an image will probably take me a minute and a half. And if, it, if I can't, if it doesn't look good in a minute and a half, I'll move on and look at another image that I've put into my folder for that date that I've shot. And that's it. And then I, I just keep them and I post them. That was the other thing that I learned as well um, on Instagram is how to um, block post to make your feed look a lot nicer and, um, oh, and yeah, that's curating all your well. post. Yeah. yeah, yeah, curating it. But of course, you know, I, I, it just comes with practice and, and learning and looking what other photographers are doing. So yeah. yeah, I've learned a lot from other people. That's the best thing I can suggest is mm. talk to lots of other photographers and learn from them. Oh, definitely. Um, if ever you uh, want to feel good about cropping, there's a great book by um, Magnum Photographers. And it's called Contact Sheets. And yes, so I've seen it. Yeah. Happy, yeah. It's fantastic. Oh, just amazing. Some of my favourite shots, like, you know, from Elliot Erwitt, and you go That's through it. the contact sheet and you see, you know, it's not the first shot he took. No. It's not even shot he took it's probably the 15th shot he took and he's absolutely in quite tight. yeah yeah i guess that's the other thing as well uh, that i've learned is sometimes that you've got to learn how to before i would just have a scene that i wanted and then just take one if i've got the right person i would just go bang and then i would move on whereas now i'm starting to get even pickier and pickier and i think i look at it and go wasn't quite right and i might hang around it if there's enough people around or i might hang around it a little bit more or I'll come back the following day. I don't like hanging around too long in a, in a spot because I feel that the light changes. Like when I pick a spot, the light will change in 10 minutes and that yeah. shadow will have moved just a fraction and it's not how I want it to be anymore. So sure. I just give a place 10 minutes and then I think if I'm, if I'm wasting half an hour here, then I'm missing a shot somewhere else that I could potentially get. And I can always come back tomorrow and that's what I do. I, I just keep coming back and back and back so just thinking about what you mentioned about you know you post um to insta quite regularly yeah uh, and now that you've had uh, exhibition experience as well yeah. <laughs> uh, are you keeping anything for exhibition purposes or are you posting everything to insta i pop look i i never i never took this up uh to to exhibit at all uh, i used to keep my instagram closed and I could never understand why I was only getting five likes, even though I was putting 30 hashtags until somebody said, uh, you've got to open up your Insta Muppet. You know what I mean? So um, I like, well, otherwise only your friends will see it. So I, I don't store anything uh, just for purely exhibition, whether that's a new thing to do, but I get too excited. So <laughs> I, I, want, I, I want to post the image, you know what I mean? And oh, yeah. for me, it's, it, it's not about likes anymore or oh, never was it, I just want to share how I see the world and if uh, what if a hundred people like it or 500 people or a thousand people like it, great but even if only 10 people like it then that's enough for me I post what I want to see and what I like and some images do really well and, I, and not even my favorite images and some don't do so well so but I post for me and then you know you'll have people telling you they'll always tell you something you'll never please everybody Mm. Post more black and white, that's your best stuff. Post more light and shadows, that's your best stuff. No, I post what, if you don't like it, move on. I post what I want and I don't want to be pigeonholed and I don't want to, I do this as a creative outlet because I have a boring job. I don't want to be stuck doing the one thing. 
this is why I'm always experimenting. It's for me. If you like it, that's brilliant, but it's for me. Yeah. I know that sounds cliche, but it is. It's no, just I for me. Photography is for yourself. Yeah, and I think people can easily get caught up in the likes and you, you see a particular image that does really well and then you start trying to replicate and replicate and replicate it, but it becomes very boring and uh, you start to lose the passion. And I don't want to lose passion for photography. So um, yeah, that's why I always try to do different things. And if you don't know how to do it, look at other photographers and learn from them, so. Which, which leads quite nicely into our <laughs> next question, actually. <laughs> this all looks like it's been pre-planned. <laughs> These questions so, uh, haven't been. <laughs> They're not so all from you, are they, Susan? These questions? <laughs> Is, uh, where do you find your inspiration and do you have some inspiring photographers or painters? Well, Jeffrey Smart was a person that I never knew. Like I said, he's a painter um, that um, I didn't know about when somebody else gave it to me. Uh, so, yeah, I really like Jeffrey Smart. But I, I mainly um, I started off just with the old Instagram people when I first started because I didn't know what the genre of street photography was. I just fell into it purely by chance, accident. But um, there's lots of people that inspire me. Like so, Gary Winogrand is is not a is not my style of photography, but I love what he does or has done. And um, I just get inspiration from anything and everywhere. I think for me, my inspiration is is my city and looking at it differently than what I ever did. And actually just instead, instead of just um, rushing from one spot to another um, in the quickest possible time, following the same route that I've always done, because I'm a very structured person. I would always sit in the same seat in the coffee shop, walk the same route, sit in the same seat on the bus, blah, 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 blah. This, Photography has allowed me to explore things differently and um, it's allowed me to see my city differently. And that's, and that's just by taking five minutes to watch the world go by, it, it's amazing what you actually see if you take a break. And mm. that's what inspires me now. And it, like I said, I'd, I'd become a bit disillusioned with the whole world and uh, it's helped me reconnect. And so I get inspired just by the things around me, the light, how beautiful it is just paying attention to eat simple things. Sure. Yeah, we um, have received some lovely comments. Uh, super impressive photos, John. Thank lovely you. lady in black and white, umbrella and the funny dog. Um, oh, we've just had another question pop in. So what Adelaide locations would you suggest for the occasional visitor with limited time? Um, don't go down Rundle Mall. <laughs> <laughs> keep well away from the shopping streets it's boring as batshit um if you just want to take photos of people walking around with bags and stuff and yeah don't i just suggest there's no i've i just walk the entire city anywhere is good for a shot anywhere um look down grenfell street waymouth street anywhere walk down anywhere where there's not a huge amount of people look for light that's all i Adelaide's not huge. It's a mile square, all right? It's not like Melbourne, where I was walking 20 kilometres a day. When I was in Sydney <laughs> looking for shots, I'd go out from 8 o'clock in the morning and come back at 6 o'clock at night, eat, and then go back out at night. So that's what I was doing when I was there. It's pretty hard to... You'll see the whole of Adelaide in that time. Um, just walk around. Enjoy it. And if you see something, photograph it. And if it's no good, photograph something else. There's nothing... I, I find new places all the time. I think there's a new photo on my Instagram. This is the thing. I could tell you a great street, but if you don't come at that right time of the day, at that time when the sun's there, at that time of year, it won't be the same. And that's the thing I've learned about my city. It mm. changes. It changes every day of the year, every, part, every minute of the day. And um, it could be just there for five minutes or two minutes because the light is reflecting off a building across here and that piece of light is only there for two two minutes and if you're not there in that exact time you never see it and so this is why i just continually walk around my city that's all i do 
is I just walk, walk, walk at different times of the day, looking for light. And I find it, I find new stuff all the time. And I've been doing this for two years solidly, two years. And I go out every day and people go, what are you, what are you photographing? There's always something to photograph, always. Yeah. You just got to look, you got to look. Yeah, absolutely. Find the light. Yeah, find, find the light, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hallelujah. Uh, so, uh, our last question, question yeah. before we wrap it up. Yeah. What's the most helpful advice you've ever received? Oh, in photography? Okay. Um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> was... Don't bag the mother-in-law. That's one thing. Um, not when it's being recorded. Um... Don't be afraid to do anything. So we're always, for me, I worked in a, I work in entrepreneurship space and I'm always pushing other people to do what they, what they want to do and to follow their dreams. The thing that I struggle with is actually believing in myself um, and ha having the confidence to do it. So that's why I never wanted to have a camera really. And it wasn't until I saw, saw Sean Tucker, uh, who just basically said, if you want to do something, just go out there and do it. Mm. And, and, and that's when I opened up my Instagram. I, 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 I didn't want to do it because I didn't want people to judge me. And, um, and because in the society that we live in, people are so quick to judge and have an opinion. Whether, and, and there's nothing wrong with uh, constructive criticism. I've learned a lot from that. But people love to just be a bit assholey. So just, just do what you want to do. If you don't, and, and just be prepared to learn from other people. Listen to other people that you respect. Ignore the people that you don't. And um, get some broad shoulders and just go out there and do it. Like when I first started, I, didn't, I started from a distance with a, with a kit lens. And I, 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 I taught myself to get closer and closer and closer. And then you realize that people don't pay attention as much as you think. And if they do, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if, that, if you want to be a street photographer, just do what you want to do and learn. And the, I think that the expression is your first thousand, a hundred thousand shots are your worst. Absolutely true. And um, the more you shoot, the better you will get. Um, and don't worry about what, uh, don't worry about what people say. You'll never, ever please everybody. Just please yourself. And then if you're happy with yourself, then that's the main thing. You do it for you, not for others. And if other people like it, then that's great. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Wise words indeed. Thanks, Russ. Back to you. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. I really appreciate it. This is very nice of you. Hello, Mario. It's good to see you. There's another bloke that inspires me a lot, Mario. There you go. I love this. Um, I love this forum. It's great. Um, well, thank you, John, for the a great session of brilliant images. I mean, what can I say? I mean, ASPE is a collective of, uh, it's a collective voice to promote street photography in Australia and to provide, and to provide Australian street photography opportunities to uh, promote their work. And uh, this forum gives it to you. It's a great forum. And I'm stoked that you have been a part of this. Uh, it, you, you've, you've touched on a lot of other things other than photography, like other artists um, and, and how you view things or what you do. And, they all inspire us to be photographers. So it's, it's, it's really nice to hear your honest perspective of, um, of street shooting. And it's great to hear something coming out of Adelaide. Um, anyway, uh, if, thank you for, for a great presentation. Um, and if I'm gonna head over to Adelaide, like I, 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 like I used to head over, before I was in COVID jail, I used to head over to Adelaide a couple of times a year, but I'm sure I'm gonna look you up next time I come over here so we can go out and you can show me your secret spots. Yeah, if any if anybody comes over to Adelaide, please just contact me. I'm I'm always happy to walk around with people and just go for a coffee and a photo snap. An hour, hour and a half doesn't worry me. Happy to. Brilliant. Thank you very much, John. Um, if you'd like to check out more of John's work, check out his Insta feed at giant underscore Evertonian. Now I'm thinking that's your soccer club, is it? It is. Um, it <laughs> Giant is the bikes I used to ride. It's not because I'm tall. I'm quite. Uh, a giant, a giant is the bikes I used to race, and uh, Evertonian because unfortunately I'm an Evertonian. <laughs> Go Man City. Anyway, speaking oh, of Instagram, glory, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. 
Speaking of Instagram, our Insta monthly street challenge of small things is still on, so you can join all the fun with the hashtag Aspie underscore small things, all the information at Insta feed. Any further information on what's going on with Aspie and our membership, please visit aspie.com.au. And just finally, next week, I hope I'm already saying this, Susan, correct me if I'm not, we have the founders of the Unexposed Collective, Julia Connings, Coddington. Sorry, I know Julia. <laughs> Can't get my words out. From Sydney and Rebecca Wiltshire from Perth. These two uh, world class street photographers, you have to you have to join the session and spread the word that they're going to be on because it's really something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, join us at the same time next week and see you all then and stay safe. Thank you guys. <laughs>